Hello, this is Anthony Arroyo from the AbletonCookbook.com, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a trick that uh, I use in order to kind of take advantage of the benefits of extract chains, but without some of the drawbacks that I mentioned in the last post. So the drawback in particular that I wanted to get around is the fact that when you use extract chains, it kind of destroys the actual drum rack because when you extract the chain, it takes the um, simpler out of the cell and it uh, puts it in its own track. So we're gonna try to get around that by doing, um, by duplicating this track, taking the, the MIDI clips out using extract chain and then layering them back together using MIDI routing. And so it's going to be a couple of steps. I'm going to put the steps in the text um, below this post so you can refer to them again. Um, but I'm also going to be using a lot of shortcuts. So um, I, I'm going to put them up on the screen as well. So make sure to pay attention to those. And it might go a little bit on the quick side, but I'll explain what I'm doing. So first I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to just play this clip that I have here. you'll see that I have a I have a drum clip that is consists of five different drum sounds in here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this whole track so I'm going to press select this track press command D and it's going to duplicate the entire track um, all the clips in this case just one clip and all of the drum racks so I'm just going to call this one drum copy then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, a whole bunch of MIDI tracks that are going to route into this original uh, drum rack. So I'm going to press Command Shift T five times. I'm just going to shrink these by selecting them all and doing that. And then I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable, right? And right now uh, I'm going to name them just so that I can keep them straight, okay? And so I'm going to name them the same as these in here. So um, for reference, I'm going to call this one kick. I'm going to call this one snare. I'm going to call this one clap. I'm going to call this one noise, not nose. <laughs> I'm going to call this one noise two. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to extract all these chains by selecting these right clicking and extract chain. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this in a group. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the few things that you can't do in a group. Uh, you can't select them all and extract them. So that one you have to do by yourself. So then I'm gonna delete the drum copy to get rid of that. I'm going to select all these like so by pressing this leftmost one, pressing shift and pressing the rightmost one, pressing command X, putting them back here. And then I'm just gonna delete these guys right here. Okay, and now the final part is I'm going to go into the I.O. here. You can also do this by doing Command Option I. And I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to route them all to this original drum rack. So I'm going to go MIDI 2, Drums. And then I'm going to modder this one in. And I'm going to close this I.O. rack by pressing Command Alt, sorry, Command Option I again. Okay, and now when I press play on this scene, it should all play into this original drum rack. So you see the original drum clip is playing, but now it's spread across all these different tracks and you might wonder why you would wanna do this. Well, the reason is, is that now if I wanted to make a new, just a new snare uh, pattern for this clip, I can go ahead and duplicate this one, actually maybe even start a whole new one. Double click here, go down to snare, and just, you know, uh, make a new snare sample, or pattern rather. And then I can play the original one. And that way I can replace different sections of the drum beat without having to um, duplicate the entire beat and re reprogram in the original clip. And I like to do this because it gives you a little bit more space. Um, I feel like when you are 
um, trying to program everything in this original drum clip down here, it gets kind of cramped. So I like to have this over here. This allows me also to switch between them really quickly. I can actually mute them. I can um, uh, mute different parts if I'd like. I can mute just the noise just by pressing stop, press the clap off, bring the clap back if I want to, and so forth. Another thing that is really good, and the reason why this is a good way to write this in general, is because you'll notice in the piano roll here, it preserves the names of the drums in the piano roll. If you were to do this without extracting the chain, it would just have the MIDI notes here which is kind of confusing because you don't want to have to remember, oh, uh, number 27 is the instrument rack, number 28 is the noise, etc. Anyway, I hope that's useful. Um, there's a lot more tricks and tips like this at theabletoncookbook.com, so make sure if you're not on to go ahead and sign up for the email list um, whenever you can.